हेल्थ केयर कैन नॉट बी रेंडर्ड बाय वन पर्टिकुलर इंडिविजुअल वाई नॉट प्रैक्टिस द प्रोफेशन एज ए ग्रुप नाउ एक्चुअली टुडे इफ यू लुक एट हॉस्पिटल्स आई थिंक दैट वुड बी माई आंसर so as you know everyone knows me as an anesthesiologist and a post surgical intensive care specialist and this is what i have been practicing in this uh, town for almost now 30 years and uh, yeah we qualified uh, from the local medical college and usmania is our uh, institute and uh, a very prestigious institute in this uh, city and uh, we were one of those early batches which were we thought about uh, i would say that uh, we never thought about anything after qualification but for profession and professional practice and um, as it happened all of us understand in indian healthcare that a uh, lot of uh, private healthcare has come up and um, especially after in 1990s and during that time when we qualified we were just qualified and came out of the institutes at that time for a very brief period in we we worked as faculty and that teaching uh, as a teaching faculty that has helped us quite a lot in shaping up our ideas about profession and the professional practice and then how that can be implemented even in private health care uh, to impart certain standards in private health care and then see how best we can render services um in a very effective manner and in a qualitative manner to patients so and uh, i particularly had this belief system that healthcare is always local you just cannot ape healthcare uh, what is being practiced in other regions of the globe and um, uh, this is a fact which we realized very early and uh, actually the healthcare which we render uh, has to be it completely suitable Uh, to the people in that environment and in that geography this is our understanding first fundamentally and then uh, healthcare cannot be rendered by one particular individual however uh, subject expertise he may have because knowledge base is always changing and medicine is changing irrespective of whatever specialty you are practicing uh, these are the few concepts we had in very early stage of our uh, professional uh, life and uh, that actually shaped us to keep on changing with changing environment and changing uh, um, uh, works that are going in medicine and the changing practices that have happened in the last three decades in medical uh, uh, profession and uh, we try to keep up pace with that though it is very difficult to keep up pace with that for everything that is happening so we i i thought that uh, why not practice the profession as a group instead of one individual so i picked up few professionals who are uh, of the with the same qualifications and then converted our practice into a group practice so we registered a company by uh, uh, and then started practicing on the name of a company and as a group so this actually has been started in 1997 and here we are today uh, about 25 years and then the group has swelled to about uh, 82 professionals and uh, with about another 20 locum professionals working for it and it has reached almost about 110 people and uh, we take on a turnkey basis both anesthesia and post surgical intensive care practices in major hospitals in hyderabad we are at present at uh, about 10 uh, different uh, organizations in the uh, hyderabad and very prominent uh, hospitals and um, i think the journey so far has been very satisfying uh, in the sense that we could build build up a group practice and this has actually quite a lot of people i am happy that quite a lot of people tried to emulate whatever we have done and uh, give us that credit of having initiated this type of practice and that hel- actually helped us uh, to keep up our knowledge base so that's the reason why we went into every branch of anesthesia be it uh, organ transplant anesthesia be it cardiac anesthesia be it neuro anesthesia or uh, anesthetics for oncological surgeries or to very major surgeries to live transplants and other things so i think uh, here we are at different hospitals and different specialties being practiced by the group and that way we were also able to keep up our academics 
within the group because of the number of people that they are, who are working and quite a good number of them being academically oriented too. So this, this is what uh, we did in our uh, practice and uh, fortunately I had an opportunity to get into the management aspects of uh, healthcare and actually I have spent almost uh, uh, 12 years in hospital management and uh, this opportunity is provided uh, it, it, it was not actually worked out for but it just came inadvertently and uh, having entered that initially I had a lot of struggle understanding healthcare and the dynamics of healthcare because uh, in the very initial and then I, we have to take uh, I personally have to take a course in uh, uh, a general management so I have that qualification also being uh, you know, from XLRA of getting a a management degree. So what I did is while keeping up whatever we were doing on the clinical front, uh, I tried to understand the dynamics of Indian healthcare and uh, and having spent about 10 to 12 years on that, uh, some concepts of mine have changed over a period of time. These concepts like uh, we were strongly believed, we strongly believed in domain expertise and domain related leadership to navigate healthcare. But then uh, later as management science has improved in many of our universities and as they become very professional the now which I personally at least changed the concept that uh, like any other organizations even um, management people have to come into it to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of healthcare and domain people uh, should actually unless they acquire some knowledge in management sciences should actually relegate and remain as uh, professionals because crisscrossing of this actually uh, doesn't help the, the perpetuation of a qualitative medical care delivery. Now one other thing that we witnessed uh, in this journey is from year I think 2012 or so to 2018 uh, quite a lot of uh, private equity investment happened into Indian healthcare in that too in uh, tertiary level hospitals and uh, Hyderabad being a hub of tertiary level hospitals. Uh, quite a number of organizations got that and then the as a result of that uh, the capital intensiveness of the organizations have increased now actually today if you look at hospitals uh, the hospitals have become very capital intensive industries and compounded uh, or to, to supplement my understanding compounded uh, by the lack of actually medical care devices being manufactured in India and we have to import quite a lot of uh, diagnostic to therapeutic equipment from uh, western manufacturers that is actually pushing up the cost of uh, establishing healthcare in India and uh, this is one thing that uh, is making uh, one of the contributing factors which is making uh, the healthcare delivery a little costly and uh, almost reaching an unaffordable proportion but then uh, with our per capita income in this country I think uh, that is going to be a challenge and unless uh, the either the government sponsored or private healthcare insurance comes and uh, does a remarkable penetration among the people uh, still with a very high level of uh, out of pocket expenses uh, that is one sad aspect of Indian healthcare which has to be addressed very very soon and in a very a meticulous and well informed manner. I think that is one thing which we noticed. So on our part what we thought about having come and practicing this our specialty as a group it is not sufficient to only practice your profession but also see whether you can contribute something with these dynamics of healthcare having understood these dynamics of healthcare. Can we do something as our bit of help to see whether healthcare can become at least a little affordable and with our whatever with our meager resources we thought about one particular area where we can actually get into and uh, which is not very capital intensive and which probably a lot of people have not looked at in India at least uh, that is a subacute care space which is actually a post hospital in the post hospitalization period people still require a lot of supportive care and most of the uh, outcomes related to the acute management of patients inside the hospital especially these higher level hospitals where there is a restriction in the length of stay in the hospitals because they are supposed to be acute care management and tertiary care centers and there actually because of the capital intensiveness with which they invest and then render service 
services, the average revenue per occupied bed day goes an hour high, very high up, which they cannot afford to do anything about it. So is there a possibility of creating a subacute care bed also in healthcare, where whoever requires a supportive care after a acute care management in hospital for a prolonged period of time can be rendered service in this subacute care area this is what we thought and uh, we made lot of uh, research work and looked at the western models and also in the eastern models we studied a bit of chinese and japanese models also and thought of doing something and experimentally we started a 28 bed subacute care uh, facility here in hyderabad and then uh, about to three and a half years back and then our experience shows that if we can give render this subacute care or a prolonged care it goes by various names either a prolonged care therapy unit or a subacute care unit or a transitional care unit or inpatient rehabilitation units it goes by various names in various geographies whatever you call it if we can render this service at about 25 percent of the cost of the hospital bed for a prolonged period and then somehow become complementary to the established to tertiary to quaternary level hospitals that will be of a great help uh, to people and uh, community so this uh, right now we have ventured into that and then uh, our experience has been pleasant so far and then we are trying to uh, tie up ends and then we extend it to one more unit and then now we have two units in Hyderabad and then now we are looking at how do we expand this and be in various locations uh, as a help to major po portions of the patients who require prolonged stay therapy. Now this is what our exercise we went into that. So apart from practicing anesthesia for about uh, 25 years and still going on and um, uh, we thought one other area where we, st we are stepping into healthcare is subacute care area. This is at a very early stage. We are only just three and a half years. Given another decade, probably we'll have a lot of learnings in this space and probably we are now thinking about getting out certain uh, healthcare metrics both clinical and management healthcare metrics and some data which can actually be helpful for the nation to reduce the disability associated life years and now disability associated life years is the uh, non productive years of any human life now our understanding is that it is about 6.7 years on a per capita basis uh, in our uh, population in this country which is i think quite a uh, good amount of uh, uh, thing and a, a service economy like india it's very difficult for them to afford this loss of productivity and uh, it's almost amounting to 10 percent of the lifespan of an individual on a per capita basis so whether these type of units can actually reduce that type of uh, disability associated life years we call them as dallies and uh, that is what actually we are trying to look and and then create certain metrics and then um, do some uh, data accumulation so that we come out with our own analysis in due course of time so in general this is uh, i think also becomes what happens most of the subacute care area healthcare you we all understand that's a very labor intensive uh, unit uh, so uh, this uh, particular talk i would like to keep clinical minimal because most of the medical professionals are not uh, going to listen to this and then learn more about it but then i would like to uh, give out my uh, particular talk on this particular day uh, to see whether uh, the concepts what we imbibed as a group and then trying to execute will be useful for people who listen to this whether it is uh, policy makers whether it is uh, uh, general people people in general um, uh, then that will serve a better purpose that is what uh, my intent would be